I knew I wanted to go to art school. And I had a professor, a photography teacher, who said I wasn't ready <laughs> for college. So um, I'd say high school, and then once I hit art school, everything opened up. And you went to art school? I went to the College of Arts and Crafts, which now they call the College of Arts. And I transferred there the second year. That's in the Bay Area. That is in the Bay Area. And it was the most wonderful experience, and it was fun. And my friend, who is a very successful and talented artist, was going there. She did go her freshman year. And she was a printmaking major. And so I decided, OK, I'll be a printmaking major. And what they taught us at school was how to print, but not what to print. So I learned about stone lithography, where you carried these huge line stones. And then we would print, and then etching. But I wasn't sure who I was yet at the time, what my voice was. Someone had given me a book that she bound of empty pages for a birthday gift. And then someone else had given me a set of colored pens. And I started doing these little drawings in this book, which I have at home. I did these characters and using these colors that you see today. So I've always loved color. And once I realized who I was, even though I was young as an artist, my teachers told me I should get into animation, that I uh, look into the film department, because they saw movement in my work. And I then got, uh, made pals with the film department and did a little 30 second animation in my senior year of, of school, which then landed me a job when I came back home, which is here, and got a job for a short while at an animation studio. At work, uh, it was a new studio, and they put me on the phones at first because it was a new, and I didn't learn to type on purpose when I was growing up. And I was very upset, but in the paint lab, it, but these are back cartoons, like this was a group that broke off from Hanna-Barbera and they opened a small, a small studio, and they were having like their wives work in the paint lab. And I said, I know color, I can do color. And so they sent me back into the paint lab, and I ended up working with this amazing woman where we mixed vats of paint for the animation, for the, for the cell animation. The oldsters that worked there were people that worked on Huckleberry Hound. Like, they used to talk about when they worked on Huckleberry Hound and those kind of cartoons. I Yogi Bear. Yogi Bear, all of them. You know, Snabapus, all of them. And so, in my spare time, I started taking the cells and just doing drawings and started painting during lunch break. And I, I liked what I saw. So I got an idea, because I wanted to do big. At home, you guys, I have some paintings that are six foot by eight foot. I like working big. So I bought rolls of plastic, like a cell, because uh, animation cell is, is plastic. And during lunch at work, they let me roll it out, and I started doing these paintings. But when they were framed, they kind of rippled. But my uncle, my cousins are here. My uncle Larry had a acrylic design firm, furniture, and he was an artist as well. And he gave me a block of acrylic. And so I painted on that, and then it was like automatically, it was like a cell, but it was already framed. And when you paint on glass or plastic or whatever, you paint backwards. You paint backwards so you turn it around and then you see your image. And the light bulb went on then that, oh, I should be painting right on sheets of acrylic, which I started to do. And I started doing these underwater scenes and got a call one day. I was home painting from another friend that some of us grew up with who had been involved in a company called London Contemporary Art. And they placed art on cruise ships. And she's we, we talked maybe twice a year, and she called, and I was happy to hear from her, and she, I said, well, I'm painting right now, and she said, well, that's good, because we're looking for new artists. And specifically, they were looking for underwater paintings on acrylic. I mean, it was like, <laughs> uh, honestly, what, what, what were the odds? So they flew me to Miami, so it was for uh, Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, and I worked for them for like 10 years, and I designed uh, like three different children's centers, where we did these underwater scenes. There were two walls, outdoor walls, where I did nine foot by 24 foot murals, where I worked with the, there were like portholes on the wall, and you know, I made them work into the imagery. And then 
Joni would call me and say, well, we need paintings to go down a hallway. And I'm going, okay. And so I started doing these huge murals. And then I started doing paintings. She called me and said, we need two 12 foot by six foot tropical paintings to go near the pool area. And I had a wall in that house that I used as my space. And I did these paintings that I really felt were beautiful. I was so proud of them, I could not believe I did them. You feel like you're there, you feel like you're at that beach, these colors and... You're a colorist and you consider yourself a colorist, but it's a certain type of colorist, maybe particularly appropriate to, uh, to animation and, uh, and to uh, the kind of painting that the uh, cruise ships needed, of a very, not simply vibrant color, but electric color. We're not talking Matisse here, we're talking the Matisse, the color relationships are similar, but the colors themselves are Matisse on acid. <laughs> well, I want to say something too, it's so important that another connection that I think that Peter became interested in talking with me further was our Uncle Peter Krasno, who was an artist who I am lucky enough to have a few of his paintings in my home, but my cousins have many of his paintings. And he, there was a huge retrospective of his work at the Laguna Art Museum in 2016. You know, we all went down, and I think we were all floored. We had seen Uncle Peter's work. We, I'd been to Uncle Peter's studio. I knew him when I was a kid. My cousins knew him well. My uncle supported Peter Krasno as artists need somebody behind them to keep them going. I should mention that Peter Krasno is considered one of the most important avant-garde artists in Los Angeles, especially in the first half of the 20th century. I found out that Jill's great uncle was Peter Krasnow. I was at once very impressed, helped me understand her work that much better, and caused me to evaluate. I didn't think is she as good as her uncle. I thought, can she be? And, you know, and that's, that's where the driving is. You know, You, you saw it here first. Yes, yes. But one day I was working and realized, duh. I mean, it's just so much his palette from the 40s and 50s and 60s. And I don't know what took me so long to put two and two together. With the, with the, with the caveat that this is, this is a, these are colors you get with acrylic, and he was painting in oils. Right. I choose acrylic because it's non-toxic, it's water-based, and I'm sensitive to smells. And so I've chosen acrylics, which are really are easy to work with. They're quick drawing, so I can add to it. I did have a conversation with Peter when I was at a kind of a, at a crossroads, which is what I kind of, I call this work. White or black, you know, because the white looked really good too, and it was a bold move. I like using black, and I think against the colors, it makes them pop used properly. Ironically enough. Uncle Peter never used black. Never, right guys? Never used black. I did look at some of his older pieces that I have one from 1922. It's a very dark oil, stunning. And it's, you know, they're dark greens, they're darker, but nothing in his modern work at all, which is kind of fascinating. I personally think black is a great contrast to the colors that I use. And so, but it's like, it can be any color. You can use any color. And so it's the choosing of what's right. And I go by what it feels right. It just feels right. Also, I want to say that my abstract pieces, I work on them in all directions so that you can actually hang them any way. They, they feel to me right no matter how you put them. They're balanced. I think I'm good at balancing colors and shapes. And yet the way they are was the way that I decided and felt they should be. Some clearly. The skull pictures, you know, clearly, were, they work the other way, they balance the other way, but this is how they're supposed to go. Did the skull paintings come out of this work, or in the midst of it, or before it? After the <clears throat> Woolsey Fire, where half of my block burnt down and half of the, bl the block survived, somehow my home survived, I was surprised with a grant for four years to do whatever I wanted with a particular amount of money. After the fire, and thank goodness my house survived, I just set up, the kids are gone, 
My whole house is really my studio space. I started doing dark work that I'd never done before. I took photographs like all day during the fire and then of course many weeks afterwards I would take walks with my neighbors and, and was constantly photographing certainly while the fire was erupting and then the disaster that was left in our neighborhood afterwards. And so I got the idea when I did these darker pieces that they look like my they look like my cul-de-sac was really what they are. Most of these pieces for me, you guys, are aerial views. I'm going to use my photographs and put them in as the eyes. I thought thought it was very stunning. But what happened was spring after the fire, the flowers were insane in Malibu, and I was taking pictures all along. And then I started lightening up. I think I got out that darkness. There was life again, and no matter how hard it's been for so many of the people that I love, you did see the flowers came back, and the building started, and uh, people came back, and school opened, and so many things.